صباح الخير Our topic today would be dental considerations in chemotherapy treated patients In the treatment of head neck tumors there are three different modalities which are used in the treatment of head neck tumors namely surgery radiation and chemotherapy sometimes we use combination of any of the above mentioned modalities surgery and radiation are used more in the treatment of head and neck tumors meanwhile chemotherapy is also used to a lesser extent Surgical resection often creates large defects accompanied by dysfunction and disfigurement. Speech, swallowing, control of saliva, mastication, and aesthetics can be adversely affected. Radiation and chemotherapy produce significant morbidity and unique tissue management problem. Radiation and chemotherapy can cause long-term irreversible sickly in the oral cavity. Starting with radiation, radiation has the advantage of localizing morbidity to a specific area. However, both modalities, surgery and radiation, have adverse effects on normal tissues, such as cellular changes, reduced vascularity, but morbidity is usually limited to the tumor area. However, chemotherapy produces more systemic effects, that's to say the morbidity is not localized. Antineoplastic agents or tumor chemotherapeutic agents are effective because they disrupt cellular growth and proliferation. And as we all know, tumor cells are more rapidly dividing than normal cells, and so they are more affected than normal tissues. In chemotherapy, treatments are unable to match the success of surgery and or radiation in the treatment of hand neck tumors. However, sometimes we use chemotherapy as a palliative treatment, that's to say, just as a supportive treatment for the patient. But in other diseases, like blood disease, leukemia, it is the only effective mean with much higher success rate. The direct cytotoxic effects of chemotherapy occasionally lead to first mucositis which is the inflammation of the mucosal surface leukopenia which is the lowering of the white blood cell count thus lowering the patient immunity and makes the patient more liable for infections like bacterial and viral infections also thrombocytopenia which is the lowering of the platelet count is another serious complication in which the patient will suffer from tendency for bleeding 
therefore if you had a patient who was treated with chemotherapy and he is coming asking for extraction you should ask first for a CBC because the lowering of the platelet count can result in severe tendency for bleeding and sometimes a patient may bleed till death side effects and oral manifestations of chemotherapy we have four main problems including oral mucositis xerostomia bleeding and infections starting with radiation radiation has the advantage of localizing morbidity to a specific area however both modalities surgery and radiation have adverse effects on normal tissues such as cellular changes reduced vascularity but morbidity is usually limited to the tumor area however chemotherapy produces more systemic effects Also, discoloration can be detected. The signs increase with greatly diminished capacity for oral hygiene. That's to say, the surface will collect debris and invite microbial invasion and prongs healing. The second manifestation is xerostomia. Xerostomia or dry mouth is thought to be caused by the effects of chemotherapy on major and minor salivary glands. Xerostomia increases the pain and discomfort of the patient. Patient which is associated with the oral mucositis. Also, the patient will have fissure tongue and therefore these patients will need to use artificial salivary substitutes in order to decrease the effects of dry mouth. The decreased salivary flow results in diminished protective constituents of the saliva with limited natural cleansing as well as alterations of the oral environment which renders the patient at increased risk of secondary infections, periodontal diseases, as well as root caries. The third manifestation of chemotherapy is bleeding or oral hemorrhage. The frequency and severity of hemorrhage is directly related to the degree of thrombocytopenia. Spontaneous intraoral bleeding is most common from the area of the gingival crevice. The sulcar epithelium is more susceptible to the effects of chemotherapy because it is more rapidly dividing and as we said before, chemotherapy affects the more rapidly dividing cells more than normal cells. fourth manifestation is infection. Infection can be considered the most serious complication in chemotherapy treated patients with bone marrow depression. The lowered immunity of these patients is a result of leukopenia thus inhibiting antibody responses and compromising delayed hypersensitivity. There are many sources of microorganisms for infections. These microorganisms often have resistance to many antibiotics, 
and can be extremely difficult to manage, including bacterial infections, viral infections, and fungal infections. Regarding bacterial infections, the patient will suffer from periodontal disease, gingival inflammation, recession, and root dehiscence. For the viral infection, the patient will suffer from herpes simplex. For fungal infection, the patient will suffer from angular colitis and candidiasis. And in immunocompromised patients, the candidal infection can be very severe. Now, we divide the oral care of chemotherapy treated patients into three phases. Phase one is prior to chemotherapy, phase two is during chemotherapy, and phase three is after chemotherapy. Regarding the oral care prior to chemotherapy, proper clinical examination and the examination of any prosthetic appliance should be carried out. Second, regarding the prosthetic appliances, any prosthetic appliance should be thoroughly examined for proper fit, function, and smoothness. Complete and or partial dangers should be adjusted, relined if indicated, or new dangers should be fabricated. Inadequacies and effects in the processes may become a potential source for problems during chemotherapy. The second phase includes the oral care of these patients during chemotherapy. First, Proper oral hygiene measures should be stressed. Also, saline bicarbonate mouth rinses should be used regularly. In addition, the patient should avoid hydrogen peroxide and commercial mouth washes as it contains alcohol, which has an irritating effect on the mucosa. Nystatin mouth washes should be used to prevent colonization of candida as a result of chemotherapy. Also, denture hygiene measures and use of soft liners are very important to improve comfort and retention. In addition, maintenance of adequate nutrition is very important for these patients. Regarding the oral care after chemotherapy, the best time to do dental care is during remission of the malignancy and during periods of rests from chemotherapy. Dental prophylaxis, dental restorations, periodontal and surgical procedures should be done at that time. If xerostomia occurs, Mouth washes and artificial saliva, as well as fluoride application, should be done at that time. And again, we have to stress on oral hygiene measures and periodic follow-up. Thank you so much.